Everybody put those blessed hands together. Amen. It's good to be here on this morning, amen, amen. to Pastor Woods and First Lady Woods, thank you for having me, and to the Clinton Chapel and Resign Church family, amen. thank you all for having me, amen. amen. Now, I'm not going to be before you very long. I was telling somebody the other day, we were talking about some chairs or something like that. I said, you know what? My preaching and plastic chairs got a lot in common. They said, what is that? I said, we ain't going to hold you long. Okay. <laughs> All right. But there is a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. So if you have your Bible, you will turn with me to the gospel according to Mark. Mark chapter 10. Beginning with verse number 46, a very familiar passage of scripture. Mark chapter 10, beginning with verse number 46. And when you have it, let it be known by saying amen. Amen. And it reads, now they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Mm -hmm. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, be of good cheer, rise. He is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Lord, that I may receive my sight. In verse 52, then Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. God's word for God's people. If I could use for a subject on this this afternoon, I was blind, but now I see. I was blind, but now I see. May we pray. Oh, gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we pause right now again. Lord, first of all, we want to say thank you. Thank you, God. God, hear your people waiting to hear a word from you. Right now, God, you are the potter and I am the clay. Mold me, make me, shape me, O oh God. God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, we all come to the point in our lives where we have been blind. And not all of us may have been diagnosed as legally blind, but we have still been blind. Right. And blindness is defined as the state or condition of being unable to see. Uh -huh. And we go through situations in life where blindness oftentimes begins to set in. Mm -hmm. And trials and tribulations can oftentimes make us blind and not allow us to see the truth of it all. all right. Those shades that the blind people wear to cover their eyes, if you aren't legally blind, then those shades represent Satan covering your eyes so you cannot see the big picture right. of the situation. Go ahead. Right. Some of you may have a significant other that treated you so good in the beginning, and now it seems like all hell has broken all right. loose. All right. People right. that you are close to are coming up telling you what they quote-unquote saw your significant other doing. And some of those people could be telling you the truth, and some of those people could be telling you a lie. But whether they are telling you the truth or telling you a lie, you have to stop being blind to the situation and open your eyes for yourself to see what is really going on. Because right now, you are too blind to see right. the big picture. Well, well. 
let's look at money. Some of you might have more money than someone else has. And you don't mind helping that person out here or there, but yet they end up taking advantage of you. Uh -huh. And yeah. you thought and you still think that you can trust that person, but yet you are too blind to see the big picture uh -huh. of the situation. Yes, sir. Whether we want to admit it or not, that blindness you are facing right now is eventually going to be over and you will see the big picture of the situation and realize what was going on all along. All right. And I don't know about you, but I know I've been blind to some situations before in life. Yeah. I was blind, but now I, I see. see. Whether you are legally blind or whether you are blind to a situation, when God steps in, that blindness is not going to last always. All right. But how does being blind and now you are able to see relate to our Christian journey? Well, yes, we were all at some point blind and caught up with the ways of the world, but then one day we allowed God to open up our eyes, yes, and right. now we see the big picture. Yes, man. And if we notice in our text on this morning, we meet a man by the name of Bartimaeus. And if you do your research and studying the name Bartimaeus can be translated into the Aramaic prefix bar, which means son of. Uh -huh. This right. is why in the text it says the son of Timaeus. Yeah. Bartimaeus, when referred to, is always referred to by his condition, which was blind. Uh -huh. Ain't it something that when he was talked about and people referred to him by his condition? His mama and daddy didn't name him blind Bartimaeus. Yeah, all right. They named him Bartimaeus. Uh -huh. yeah. But yet people called his name by his condition. All right. Yeah. And I'm sure it's a lot of you out here that refer to some people by their condition or how they used to be before they became redeemed. Right. But the truth of the matter is that you wouldn't know what they were like before they got saved if you weren't out there doing the same thing right. they were doing. Yeah. Well, uh, so that gives you no room to talk because you have probably committed some of the same sins or more than they have. Uh -huh. How would you feel if somebody referred to you by your condition or how you used to be? Uh -huh. and one thing we need to realize is that it would be a shame if God referred to us by our sins uh -huh. that we have committed. Fix it up, Let sir. me tell you something. Take this in. Satan knows your name uh -huh. because you buy your sin. All right. God knows your sin, but he calls you by your name. All right. Some of you have some Satans in your life. They know your name. They've been knowing you for 50 plus years, but yet they call you by your sin. Right. Some of you might have some people in your life that they know your sin. They know what you've been through. Y'all grow up in the hood together. Then look at how God delivered you, but yet they call you yeah. by your name. All yeah, right. yeah. Those are the type of people that have respect for you. But getting back to our text, Bartimaeus was a blind man who lived in Jericho. And for those of you who don't know, Jericho is about five miles west of the Jordan and about 18 miles northeast of Jerusalem. And Bartimaeus sat by the roadside begging because during these times, since blind people were unable to work, they made their living by begging. But he heard one day that Jesus of Nazareth was going to be passing by. So yeah. he cried out unto him because he wanted to be healed. Yeah. And yeah. he knew that Jesus could heal, so he wanted Jesus to restore his sight. Uh -huh. Some of you might be going through situations and are too blind to see through them. You need right. to cry out to Jesus right. so he can help restore your sight. Yes, but what happens when you have been blind and now you see? see. There's three things that need to take place when you have been blind, but now you see. First, you hear about Jesus. Uh -huh. While we still had our blinded eyes and was out in the world, we heard people talking about Jesus. We heard people say how he could change your life. We heard people say how he performed miracles. We heard people say how he made a way out of no way. But yet we were so blinded by the ways of the world that some of you really just didn't believe. In our text on this morning in verse 47, it says that Bartimaeus heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth passing by. And 
Bartimaeus, when he heard what Jesus could do, his faith allowed him to believe that if Jesus did it for them, I know he can yeah. and will do it for me. So what happens when we hear that Jesus is passing by? Secondly, we cry unto Jesus. Uh -huh. Some of us, we heard about Jesus and what he could do. Then we began to try him for ourselves. Uh -huh. We cried out unto him. And we've heard about all the things that he's done for others. And this is when we want to find out for ourselves. So we cry out unto him. Uh -huh. And verse 47 says that Bartimaeus began to cry out unto Jesus. And he said, Son of David. Have mercy on me. Yeah. And this phrase, son of David, is a common title used as such only in the synoptic gospels. But one thing we need to realize, brothers and sisters, is that when people don't want us to cry unto Jesus, they want us to stay in the same shape that we are in, and they will try to get yeah. us quiet. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. this is what happened in verse 48 with Bartimaeus. We find that the people tried to keep him quiet, but the Bible said that he cried out loud. Uh -huh. One thing we need to understand is that when we cry unto Jesus, he will acknowledge us. Uh -huh. yeah. In yeah. verse number 49, it says that Jesus stood still and commanded him to come unto him. And in other words, this means that he is rebuking those who are trying to silence Bartimaeus. Uh -huh. Then, as we move on down to verse number 50, it says that Bartimaeus threw his garment down and he went to Jesus. Uh -huh. We need to realize that when Jesus calls us to come to him, we must go. All right. Verse 51 states that Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? And one thing I find significant about this question is that Jesus knew that Bartimaeus had a need, but yet he asked the question to make a point. Uh -huh. right. Bartimaeus realized that he had a condition that needed some attention, so he asked for help, and then he had enough faith to receive it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what you are going through, but Jesus will ask you what you want him to do for you once you cry out unto him. Yeah. And Bartimaeus told Jesus that he wanted to receive his sight. Yeah. Third and finally, then I'm going to get out your way. Our faith will make us well. Uh -huh. yeah. Sometimes along life's journey, we can make it out of certain situations if we just have strong faith. Uh -huh. We have to have and we should have the faith to believe that having strong faith in Jesus will make us well. Yeah. Bartimaeus had strong faith and in verse number 52, the Bible says that Jesus told him that his faith made him well. Uh -huh. And when he gained his sight, he followed Jesus. Uh -huh. and some of us, we have had strong faith in Jesus, but once he gives us what we want, wow. we don't continue to oh, follow yeah. him. Yes, we only call on him when we best see fit. Uh -huh. But if we need to understand that we should praise God when he has healed us and even when we are going through the healing process. Right. Uh, now, as I get ready to close, I want to make sure we understand what should happen when yes, we sir. are blind, but now we are able to see. Uh -huh. uh, first, we have heard about Jesus. Uh, secondly, we cried out unto him. Uh, yeah. And finally, our faith will make us well. Uh, whatever it is uh, that you are going through, uh, that has you blinded, uh, Jesus can. Uh, and he will remove that blind from your eyes uh, and allow you uh, to see the real picture.